Hello, I'm Dr. David Memel, Vice President of Physician Office GPOs at Cardinal Health Specialty Solutions. Joining me today for a discussion about the changing field of rheumatology is Dr. Gordon Lamb, Medical Director at Northeast Rheumatology Atrium Health in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hello, Gordon. Hey, David. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. It's great to see you. Gordon, rheumatologists have been experiencing a significant amount of change in their practices over the past few years. And as you know, Cardinal Health conducted research with rheumatologists earlier in the year to better understand these issues. Can you share some of the findings with us? Yes, David, I'd be happy to. So rheumatology is one of the fastest growing specialties in medicine with the number of patients expected to grow from 55 million to more than 78 million over the next 20 years and not only is it rapidly growing, but it's rapidly changing. So this prompted Cardinal Health to launch a research study to better understand how providers are responding to these changes. This study was a web-based survey of over 100 community rheumatologists in the United States, conducted from February to March of this year. Um, of note, it was completed just before the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, but interestingly, Many of the answers were relevant and prescient to the seismic changes in healthcare uh, because of it, such as the use of telehealth services and other technology. Um, in general, rheumatologists cited increasing administrative and practice management duties as their biggest challenge in the year ahead. A close second was the changing reimbursement landscape, especially in the setting of value-based care. A third was the growing provider shortage to meet the increasing demand for rheumatology care with the aging baby boomer and Gen X populations. Um, this has been well documented in the 2015 ACR workforce study, and it's one of several factors creating uncertainty for today's rheumatologists. So not surprisingly, addressing these gaps was felt to be a top business priority in the survey. Um, in addition, the study evaluated rheumatologists' impressions of biosimilars. The results were remarkably similar to that of other specialists whom Cardinal Health had surveyed previously. That is, despite an overwhelming familiarity with the FDA approval process for biosimilars, as well as a comfort level with prescribing them, uh, the majority of rheumatologists were still reluctant to use them in practice at this time. I most felt that today's economic climate is unfavorable to switch to a biosimilar, mainly due to lack of payer adoption and their skepticism of the meaningful cost savings to patients and practices. So these reflect just some of the challenges that rheumatologists face with today's changing landscape, challenges that span both medical and economic considerations for practitioners today. Well, that certainly is a, a range of, of challenges that they're facing. Can you tell us about some of the ways that rheumatologists are, are addressing these? Yes. Um, so rheumatologists in general are very resourceful and hardworking. Uh, to meet the challenges that they're facing today, they're turning to hiring, technology, and working, lo working longer. Um, a majority of respondents, so 57% to be exact, said that they're expecting to hire more advanced practice providers, or APPs. A third said that they plan to use telemedicine to expand patient care, and, and remember, this was before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. This number is undoubtedly greater now. Um, and the same number of respondents said that they plan to invest in technology or tools to enable them to spend more time on patient care. So examples of this may include employing scribes or utilizing population health management strategies. 23% um, of respondents said that they plan to postpone retirement and 14% plan to extend hours to meet the gap of growing demand for services. Um, this reflects the industriousness of rheumatologists, but it may also be a concern for burnout, which has been a perennial concern in medicine. Um, I personally feel that the embrace of advanced practice providers is a positive sign for our industry. 95% of the rheumatologists surveyed said that they expect APPs to take on as much or more responsibility in the future. And to support this, we've seen an increase in training opportunities for them. Um, as more APPs come into the field, the next important step is to direct their utilization to regions with the highest demands, like the Southeast, South Central, and North Central regions, where the shortage of providers is more severe. 
And not only may this help to address the workforce shortage, but it may also help to stave off physician burnout. So that's an interesting, interesting perspective. With the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected everyone who works in healthcare, what impact has it had on rheumatologists specifically? Mm -hmm. um, it's been now eight to nine months since the pandemic really broke here in the United States, and it, it has affected everyone in healthcare from doctors to patients to staff alike. It's impacted every aspect of medical practice, how we treat patients, um, office workflow redesign, how we communicate and interact with patients, um, and then as well as the psychological aspects of disease like anxiety, confusion, and frustrations felt by patients, colleagues, and, and ourselves alike. Uh, but perhaps the greatest impact has been the rapid adoption of health, health telehealth services um, which has essentially been by necessity. Uh, within days, almost all of us had to stand up telemedicine to sustain patient care and revenue. And it's really been a lifeline, both medically as well as economically. So virtual care has allowed us to maintain patient care continuity throughout the pandemic. But interestingly, 34% of the respondents to the Cardinal Health Survey had already planned to expand patient care with telemedicine before the pandemic. And I feel that this shows how precocious rheumatologists are in general. Um, and I can corroborate this firsthand. So for example, our, health, our healthcare system had been investigating telehealth solutions for years um, as part of our addressing the evolving healthcare landscape. And then our clinic in particular had discussed ways of implementing it to expand access and to alleviate stressors on our staff and providers alike. This allowed us to be really well positioned to serve patients remotely once the pandemic hit and we had to temporarily close our doors. Now, um, let me be clear, telemedicine has not been a panacea either clinically or financially during these extraordinary times, um, but it has allowed us to fill the gaps in care. Prior to COVID-19, it was used sparingly, mainly because of limitations in technology, um, lack of technical know-how by providers such as myself and patients, um, and the lack of reimbursement by payers. Um, but the pandemic provided an impetus for change, leading to new opportunities. CMS is wide in coverage, so telemedicine visits can be reimbursed. And then other payers have followed suit. Virtual platforms have improved rapidly, and practice models have been implemented accordingly. Um, and providers and patients have adopted the new technology to maintain care. So while the pandemic may be short term, over the long term, we expect the outreach and convenience of telemedicine to increase access to care, um, improve patient satisfaction, and reduce administrative management duties in ways that never would have been considered previously. Hmm. So, so what's ahead for rheumatologists in 2021? So the COVID-19 pandemic has put rheumatology practices in truly unprecedented and extraordinary times. And um, we'll continue to evolve and change in the coming year. Um, challenges will be based on the control of the virus, which will affect our ability to care for patients um, and the practice models needed to do so. This will cause flux in the reimbursement landscape, which was already foremost in line with value-based care. And all of this is in the setting of an existing workforce shortage and increasing administrative demands prior to the added stressors of the pandemic. However, these challenges are balanced by the opportunities that are now in front of us. Uh, rheumatology has always led the field in advancing the understanding of immune-mediated inflammatory diseases, as well as the development of therapeutics for them. But this won't change. Um, and 2021 is poised to make significant gains on this front. But the embrace of advanced practice providers, telehealth and other technologies will continue to shape the immediate and long-term future of our specialty. And I believe that they'll be for the better. So challenges will always be present in rheumatology, but how practices respond to them is what's most important. I have no doubt that if rheumatologists continue to embrace these opportunities as they have with COVID-19 and the industry dynamics that preceded it, change will result in ongoing progress. Well, thank you, Gordon. It, it's been great speaking with you. I appreciate you sharing these insights with us. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.